Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Jun Xiao Chang. I'm uh, very glad to have uh, this opportunity to speak, uh, speak with you, uh, speak to you today. Uh, I'd like to share uh, my idea on this topic, uh, tuning RT kernel to improve uh, real-time schedule performance with the Intel platform. Uh, this is uh, here a short description of uh, RT kernel schedule performance. Uh, firstly, thread could be scheduled at uh, its uh, expiry time. Secondly, it should be low latency. Lastly, it should uh, support a consistent uh, uh, response time. Uh, for RT kernel in this uh, session, it's based on upstream kernel. And uh, most of RT kernel patch have been upstream, but still around the uh, uh, 100 out of three patches with the kernel as the maintainer in b below two repositories. The uh, first one is the uh, uh, RT stable. RT stable is for long term kernel. Second one is for the mainline kernel. Uh, for prim RT kernel option, configure prim preemptive RT. Uh, I think all of you here are Linux expert and should know this uh, option well, but I still <laughs> mention it here because it's a, a basic and the most important kernel option. It must be enabled, uh, uh, or else it doesn't make sense to select the RT kernel. Uh, by the way, this, uh, this kernel option's name is a different, uh, uh, I mean, before 5.4, its name is uh, uh, config preempted, preempted RT4. Uh, uh, here is the beginning. Uh, which domains are tuned or improved for RT performance? Uh, for, uh, the first is the poor management domain. Second is CPU cause isolation. The third one is the timer and the clock. Last one is debugging and lock detection related option. Uh, this page, uh, uh, this page is about uh, make tuning on DVSS uh, CPU frequency in poor management domain. Uh, if if DVS, DVFS is enabled, sometimes the CPU frequency is high, sometimes it's low. Uh, for most of Intel CPU, uh, if we disable CPU frequency driver, they will run in maximum and uh, consistent CPU frequency. So uh, for the uh, for all RT kernel thread, uh, sorry, not only kernel, for RT thread could be run in consistent and uh, best performance uh, with better to disable uh, uh, CPU frequency driver. Uh, currently, uh, usually, there are two CPU frequency driver for Intel CPU. One is the uh, traditional uh, ACPI uh, CPU frequency driver. The second one is the uh, Intel P data. Uh, we should disable them together. Uh, ACPI uh, ACPI CPU frequency driver could be disabled by uh, by this uh, kernel option CP, uh, config x86 ACPI CPU frequency. The Intel PC could be just disabled, uh, disabled by just uh, open the command line. Intel PC data equal disable. Uh, we could make tuning on CPU idle as well. Uh, most of modern CPU support uh, uh, Intel, uh, so, sorry, not, not Intel, idle state. Uh, when there is no thread running, it could enter uh, uh, idle thread, uh, idle state. Intel CPU support uh, idle state, uh, idle C state, C1, C1E, C2, and so on. Uh, bigger number means deeper sleep state. It could save more current drain, but it needs a longer time to wake up. Uh, this is, uh, uh, 
these CPU, uh, uh, CPU idle related common line parameters could be tuned, uh, adjusted for better performance. The first one is idle equal pole. Uh, CPU, CPU, hard, uh, CPU hardware idle will be disabled because the CPU uh, uh, idle thread is in a uh, loop. It doesn't enter uh, hardware idle state. Uh, by this way, uh, its performance is the best. Its response time is uh, is best, but it can uh, it couldn't save current drain. Uh, the second parameter is the Intel idle maximum C state equal a number. The, by this option, it could go to uh, hardware uh, idle state. For example, C1, C1E. Uh, the X number is a li limitation for the maximum Intel X state. The third one is the processor idle maximum state. This parameter is similar with uh, the pri uh, previous one. The difference is uh, this one is for the in, uh, ACPI idle driver. The first one is for uh, Intel idle driver. Uh, usually, uh, by default, uh, Intel, uh, Intel idle driver is a default uh, idle driver. Uh, if, if CPU idle is enabled, I mean, hardware, uh, hardware idle state is enabled, uh, we should enable S0 X support in BIOS if the reason. Tra traditional uh, deep sleep mode support is S3, but uh, if the read S0 X support, we should enable this, this option. Uh, the read trade off here. Uh, if we disable uh, hardware idle state, it could get best performance. But uh, if your device is uh, uh, battery powered, it, uh, the battery will be run out of battery soon. So it depends on the, your uh, real, uh, real user case. Uh, if you enable hardware is, uh, idle state, it still could meet uh, the, the requirement. Then set a, uh, set a second parameter and uh, disable first one. I mean, don't, uh, I mean, don't uh, append the first parameter and append the second parameters and set the number to maximum number, which uh, the performance still could meet your requirement. This is the best option. But if, uh, for example, if your device is uh, uh, not a battery port, if you have an external uh, power supply and uh, the real time performance is very important. It's then much more important than battery life. So append the first uh, um, first parameter. I mean, idle equal pole to the command line parameter. This uh, the the Intel uh, uh, Intel idle state will be disabled, and uh, its uh, performance is the best. Uh, this page is uh, CPU cooling. C CPU cooling could be tuned for RT performance as well. Usually we might uh, often ignore it. CPU overheating happens sometimes if uh, the CPU is very busy. At the, uh, then it might reduce the frequency to prevent uh, overheating and hardware damage. To avoid the jitter due to CPU frequency change, it uh, is better to avoid the CPU overheating, improve airflow for the device, clean CPU fan, and make sure it works well. This is important, but <laughs> maybe we often ignore this. If there is a CPU fan related setting in BIOS, set it to cooling mode. Usually, if there is this option, there is, a, for example, Quiet standard cooling mode set it to cooling. You may hear the, the, the some noise for the uh, from the CPU fan, but uh, it makes the, the CPU frequency uh, performance better. Uh, the, this is for the Intel graphic driver tuning. Uh, if real time thread needs a graphic support, for example, is there is a uh, OpenGL, OpenCL calculation, 
or it needs a hardware video decoder, or, or it has some 3D, uh, 3D application running. Uh, N915 parameters could be adjusted for better performance. N915 is the uh, Intel uh, in Linux graphic driver name. Uh, first, the uh, N915 command line parameter is I915 disable power while. Uh, from, from the name, we, we could uh, know it's a, just a, uh, a power is always on. We, disable, uh, we uh, set it to zero, means the, the display module uh, power is always on. The second uh, I915 command line parameter is I915 dot enable DC. Uh, DC means display C state. It's uh, very similar uh, with the the one we just mentioned in Intel uh, Idle. Intel Idle has a CPU CPU core C state. So here it's a display module C state. We could set uh, it to zero. Uh, if we set to zero, display C state is disabled. Uh, last uh, parameter is uh, I915 uh, RC6. Uh, sorry, this is not a uh, command line parameter. It's uh, a sys uh, interface. We could disable RC6 uh, if there is this uh, uh, interface. By disable this uh, interface, uh, uh, Intel, G Intel GPU doesn't go into, uh, uh, I mean, uh, deep sleep mode the performance will be better. Of course, it <laughs> needs a, a current drain. Um, one thing, um, you are, are you aware of the Intel ME driver for the new generation GPUs? Uh, the, sorry, uh, you, you, XE you mentioned. It's not E915, but the other driver that Intel contributed for the next gen. Next gen is XE. It's not, uh, for me, for my understanding, it's not stable yet. I ever tried the XE, the new driver with, uh, uh, with or at least 12, 12 generation CPU, it doesn't work well. Ah, okay. My question would be basically, you showed like three options, what to do, like display always on and so on and so mm -hmm. forth. My question would be if the other driver has the same tweaks to be required. Good question. Uh, frankly, some uh, different hardware may, might, uh, their uh, parameter might be different, but if you set these uh, three parameters together to disable, uh, it could make sure uh, the, the the i915 driver, uh, the power display hardware driver power should be always on, because okay. some older driver might might need the support uh, might support RC6. Some driver support uh, the the parameter. Uh, just a second, I go to the previous slide. Uh, some uh, some hardware uh, i915 driver support uh, uh, so, so support enable DC. Some support uh, the disable. Uh, uh, disable power well. I think my opinion is to disable, uh, disable these three together. Right, because we do have those in the RT wiki in, for the i915 driver, just to point people that those things may need to be tweaked. So I'm just curious if we should add the same thing to the other driver for the that is upcoming, if you say it's not stable yet. Uh, for other driver, for if uh, for XE, I don't think it's uh, stable. I, it, it don't have such a kind of parameter yet. Ah, okay. <laughs> but it could be also needed, right? If it's the same thing. Uh, I, I think this is a good question, but I don't have a, I don't try XE uh, yet. Ah, okay, okay. Thank you. Maybe XE should have a similar parameter. I, I, I will add a to-do list, add an item in to-do list too. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> For, uh, the, in this page, uh, we talk about uh, CPU isolation for real-time uh, th thread. Uh, the core isolation idea is simple. It just reserve a, a couple of uh, CP a couple of calls, or uh, it depends on your uh, use case for high priority task running only. Isolate, isolated code looks like a, a VIP room. Uh, uh, real-time thread is. Uh, uh, high, pro high priority real time thread is a VIP. Uh, CPU isolation needs a kernel 
uh, option on the command line chain, uh, the, the kernel option is a, a configure CPU isolation. Uh, it needs a, a command line parameter uh, as well. The related command line parameter is a CPU isolate, uh, sorry, not a CPU, isolate the CPU equal a CPU list. Uh, in this uh, case, uh, uh, in my case, I, I set it to two, that is, the core two is isolated. Uh, the second uh, option is uh, uh, IRQ affinity. Since the uh, isolated CPU, uh, isolated core is a VIP, so the IRQ should be migrated to other cores. This could be done by several ways, but the simple way is just open the, this uh, uh, this command line parameter IRQ affinity equal a, a CPU number. This CPU number should a non isolated CPU. By this way, the most of the interrupt could be migrated to the, the to this non isolated CPU. Uh, not all uh, the interrupt could be migrated to the non isolated CPU. For example, IPI local I, local timer and uh, uh, NMI, uh, such kind of interrupt. But uh, most of the device interrupt will be migrated to the, uh, to the parameter we, uh, we, we specified. In some system, there is a RQ uh, balance. So it, it, it might migrate the RQ back to, uh, to isolate the CPU. So, uh, if the read this uh, service, please uh, disable it firstly. Uh, the, the last option is RCU callback. RCU callback should be offloaded to other calls uh, for the for the isolated CPU. So uh, since we are uh, VIP, we don't handle the RCU callback. Uh, hybrid core. Intel introduced a new uh, new uh, performance uh, efficiency hybrid architecture uh, with the 12th generation Adelic processor family. Uh, it's a performance core. Uh, I, I think it uh, is a good performance, but uh, need more poor energy. But uh, efficiency core save energy, but uh, it's a uh, performance is worse than the performance, it's a performance, I mean, efficiency, uh, E-core performance is worse than the P-core. So if uh, if the real-time thread need, uh, need a lot of correlation, or it's a very, problem is very important. So we could uh, isolate uh, the, the P-core, performance core. Usually, performance core will be in, enumerated firstly, so just uh, isolate the, the CPU core in a small number. For example, two, two, three, two or three. Uh, this is the for. Uh, I asked question about the P cores and the E cores. Mm -hmm. uh, what are the kernel interfaces that? tell you like which core is P and which core is E, so? Uh, good question. <laughs> for me, I, <laughs> for me I, I don't know. Uh, the, the, uh, currently, it looks like there is no easy way to tell you it's a P or E, but uh, you, uh, the first core, uh, the core in small number is a P core. Uh, the, the bigger number is a E core, because E core are in number the uh, lastly. Okay. For example, you, if you have a, a, a four P core, four E core, usually the first eight core is a P core because it uh, it uh, has a two logical core. Uh -huh. So uh, then the last four core is a E core. Oh, okay. Oh. Hi. Uh, could you maybe read the uh, E or P core from the CPU ID string? Uh, uh, Yes, this way is okay. CPU ID could, uh, there is a, a CPU ID in instruction. You yes. could uh, read a, s a CPU ID and then get the, it's a, it's a peak or equal. Yeah. Yeah, also regarding these ENP cores, 
Um, how are they enumerated um, in the in the CPU list? So is it always the last ones are the E cores, or is there no uh, uh, no no special meaning behind the number? Uh, for, for my understanding, <laughs> usually P core are uh, enumerated firstly. So if you uh, cut the CPU uh, CPU info. Uh, the, the CPU the ID number, which is small, is, usually is a P core. Uh, I, I don't know how, I didn't uh, pay attention on this, how uh, they are in, enumerated, but uh, usually for my understanding, the, the small core ID, uh, the core small, uh, sorry, the core ID, which is small, they are usually, they are P core. <laughs> uh, the, the, I think uh, they are good question because uh, from, uh, I think we should have a proper interface to show kind of call is P call or E call, but I can't really know. <laughs> uh, this is for cache sharing. This is uh, uh, very important, but uh, usually maybe we ignore it uh, uh, as well. Uh, cache performance of high priority might be impacted by low priority, which is enable a logic call. Uh, for example, if you have a, a, a real-time thread, high-priority thread, and for example, you you are running a real-time thread, you are control uh, robot arm in call uh, in this page, uh, logic call two. Uh, in the uh, same time, uh, there is a low-priority uh, task which just saves the offline uh, offline log to the file system. It's a really low priority in the core, uh, logical core three, then uh, because the logical core two and the logical core three, they share L1 and L2 catch, uh, then your high, high priority task of catch performance might be impact, impacted by low priority task. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> this is, uh, uh, fortunately, this could be avoided. In our testing, we often, uh, uh, isolate the uh, neighbor core, and for example, logical core two and the logical core three, we isolate them together. By this way, high, pro high priority task will not be Im impacted by other thread, and the kind of performance will be consistent. Uh, for how to get a catch sharing and uh, related information, I, I note here below. Uh, there is a sys file system interface. Uh, the, the path is a sys device, devices, uh, system, CPU, CPU number, cache, in, cache in index. Uh, uh, the, the in, uh, this folder, it has all kind of cache related information, for example, cache size, uh, cache type, and uh, cache sharing information. Pay attention, please share the, the uh, the CPU logical code together if they share L1, L2 cache. Yeah, oh, sorry. Yeah, but isn't uh, isn't it recommended to uh, disable SMT hyperthreading when you run the RT workloads? So then, will that avoid this uh, cache sharing issue? Uh, a good question. Uh, I think uh, for uh, multi-thread, multi, uh, not multi-thread, hyper-thread, uh, for this, uh, I I don't recommend to disable at all. We could, di uh, I, I think we could just uh, isol isolate uh, uh, two logic calls together. If you disable the, the hyper-thread, you will have, uh, have less calls, right? So. I, 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 I handled this question many times internally at Red Hat. The reason is that, yes, if you would like to try most of your latency, yes, it is a big hammer disabling hyper-threading, but you are losing half of your CPUs. So why do you want to lose half of your CPUs? What, so what happened is recently Intel CPUs, they're getting the same number with or without hyper-threading. So yes, it, it's not a recommendation, it's, it is try to see if breaks things or not. Uh, so of course, if your company is rich, you have enough budget, you, 
you could order a, a, a CPU, uh, 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 I mean a CPU or device with a lot of code, you just disable. <laughs> it, it's okay. Uh, just kidding. Yeah, but we also run into we also run into situations that the yeah when you enable SMT with the hyper threading, you got actually a uh, worse performance. Mm -hmm. So. We actually, yeah, inside ARM, they have like a, a lot of discussions why, uh, when, if we really need SMT or, or not, uh, when we do comparison with the SM, uh, with Intel cores, should we enable SMT or disable SMT? Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, actually, I'm from, from Siemens, and we had the same discussion also many, many times. Uh, the biggest problem is that you have shared resources within these uh, SMT cores and like the FPU. So if you really know your workload, then you can run both in parallel, but usually we don't do that. So we are better safe than sorry and just disable the SMT for uh, the real-time cores. And of course, for the others, we can leave it on. Um, one thing to consider is if you have um, one thread only and you run it 100%, and you have two threads instead fully loaded, then you run at roughly 70%, maybe more, maybe less, depending mm -hmm. on the architecture. So this is also a performance issue, what do, you, what do I want to have? And if you disable them, you have consistent numbers. If you don't disable them and you have them, the numbers may vary. So it's depending on your use case. Yeah. Yeah, and that's about it. It's depending on the use case. It's not a, a, a rule. For, for example, people using the PDK on Intel, they run with hyper-threading enable, and that's good enough for their performance. So the best performance is, is not always uh, related with the best that you use for the platform. Yeah, I agree with you. This is no clear answer. It's a uh, yes or no. Sometimes it depends on your, your usage. But for my opinion, I, I prefer to isolate the two neighbor calls together. By this way, we don't need to uh, disable uh, we don't disable hyper threading, but we still have a lot of, uh, I think we still have enough core. <laughs> so this page is uh, about a clock and a timer. Uh, um, modern Intel CPU has multiple, modern Intel CPU has multiple instances of a clock source. For example, TSC and uh, HPET, uh, legacy, uh, legacy PIT or uh, RTC. Uh, uh, TSC is, uh, the, the, uh, is a register in each call. Uh, there is a TSC read and TSC write uh, instruction. Its performance is the best. So uh, usually, by default, uh, clock uh, Cloud source, the source uh, is a TSC. By default, uh, it's a TSC. But uh, append these, uh, append these two command line parameters uh, to the so to make uh, sure to double confirm uh, the cloud source is TSC. The first uh, is a clock source equal TSC. The second is TSC equal reliable, or TSC equal no watchdog. Uh, by uh, the first uh, is uh, make sure it can't uh, clock source is TSC. The second is uh, uh, it uh, uh, with this parameter. I mean TSC equal reliable. The kernel thinks the current TSC is uh, stable enough. It uh, will not kick off a uh, extra uh, timer uh, TS, uh, clock source timer uh, for uh, clock source uh, the calibration. Uh, the second is to try to make uh, isolated the core thickness, thickness or thickness. Yeah, thickness. Uh, the first is to enable kernel option config no hertz full. The second you need to uh, append the command line parameters no hertz uh, no hertz underscore full. Uh, this is to uh, uh, this is to stop timer whenever possible. If there is no uh, handle, sorry, there is less uh, interrupt handle, the real time performance uh, sh uh, should be better. 
the, 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 uh, the last option is a timer migration. Uh, even we isolate a CPU, uh, sometimes the, the timer still be migrated back to, not migrate back, migrate in uh, uh, the isolated CPU before, uh, before we do a launch or a real time task. Firstly, we disable timer migration by echo zero to this proc sys interface. Um, there's a few things. Um, I find it kind of difficult to um, uh, suggest TSC reliable by default to everyone because we have this um, watchdog for TSC because it's not always reliable. Mm -hmm. So if Intel guarantees for you SOC that this TSC is reliable, you it usually have a CPU ID flag for it, which you can query. So this shouldn't be required. I'm aware that a few atoms don't have this, but Intel claims this is reliable, you can skip it. So this is different, but I wouldn't put it as a rule of thumb to just disable the watchdog and begin with it, right? Uh, you agree? <laughs> yeah, but uh, <laughs> for, for, for my testing, I often uh, open the view to parameter because I often use uh, uh, maybe it's uh, for example, tag, sorry, tag like uh, the 11th or, uh, or add like 12th, maybe the hardware is new. So uh, uh, this parameter is okay for, for my hardware. Yeah, for this if hardware. Uh, that's my point. If Intel says this is okay and I'm aware of all the atoms where the TSC was okay, but it wasn't exposed by the uh, CPU ID. And then mm -hmm. if you override it to skip the watchdog, then this is fine. But I wouldn't give this as it as a rule of thumb, do this, you're safe. Mm -hmm. Because the TSC might not be safe, it might catch up during boot or later on. They might not be synchronized against other CPUs, which is uh, figured out later on in the system. But with this, you disable all the checks basically. Uh. Uh, I need to add a to-do list to check this uh, <laughs> no <laughs> worries. good question. Um, one thing regarding no heads full, mm -hmm. um, it usually makes sense if you rely on your application in user land all the time and you have roughly no or little changes to kernel for whatever you do. Because if you have no heads full enabled and you have frequent changes to the kernel and back, mm -hmm. then this is more expensive. You isolate it to you one to your core two, then this is okay. But this is more or less um, use case dependent, but yeah. <laughs> okay, for, at least for the first uh, reliable, uh, for this parameter, I, I will, uh, I did to do, to do later, I will try it later and uh, up to you. If there is a next uh, USS session, <laughs> uh, I will explain it in the next. Uh, uh, just, just adding, Probably most of these tunings that we are seeing here, they are biased by the case of the network function virtualization people mm -hmm. trying to, to run busy loop tasks. And then that's the case of no hertz full because they just keep in user space. So what we are seeing, it's normal. We are all trying to get the best number, but the best number depends on the application. It's then that, that's why it's all variable. Do I need it? Do I don't need it? <clears throat> My idea is just to to uh, re uh, reduce the timer and uh, inter other interrupt as, uh, as many as possible. So I think uh, the, the problem should be better. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it's better, but at which cost, right? Mm -hmm. at, each, at which cost? So it, it depends on, on, on how much cost you want to add the penalty. Mm -hmm. If you want to do the best, the best, the best, the best, you might make a non-reliable choice. You might throw away half of your CPUs. Yeah, okay, you get the best number, but that might not be the best option overall because you might better have all the hyper-threading. You better play safe with this. So there is always this trade-off, and I think that's what people... Mm -hmm. We are all in agreement here. That's yeah, a lot of trade-off. <laughs> yeah, we are all in agreement mm -hmm. that there is this option. We need depends on the worst case, the use case. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's move on. And that's actually for me was one of the benefits of TUND because TUND has a lot of profiles for different use cases like networking, virtualization and others. And it actually helped me, whether I use it or not, uh, was to help me actually see which, uh, which actually, <laughs> 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 
which actually helped me to to at least know which options are re recommended for virtualization, which options are recommended for networking, which options are recommended for DPDK, which does most of the networking in user space and so on. So, yeah. I think we're talking a lot about tuning and different use cases. I, before I though, I have a statement at the end, but how many more slides do you have that I want to make sure you get through yeah. your, your presentation? Uh, we'll, 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 we should, we should. How many slides do you have? Yeah. Uh, how much time do you need? Yeah. Uh, I think uh, we, we are soon. Well, it's around the uh, uh, five pages. Okay, why don't you go, go through the five, yeah, and then I think this, what I was going to say is I think this tuning topic is something that is dynamic and changing and different use cases. My, my main thing is I don't think any of us should look at any, and it was great, I think it's great that everybody's sharing, including the previous presentations and that. I think it's a dynamic learning of the industry, and, and we shouldn't take any of these as two, you know, there's not one size fits all, as you were saying, right? And we're learning, right? So that's the only point I wanted to make, so. Yeah, good. I, I just, uh, um, I didn't notice that it's, uh, it's around the 35 minutes. Okay, I, I will move on. Okay, thank you. Uh, this is the lock, uh, debug and the locking detection. and. Uh, disable uh, all of, all of uh, debugging and uh, re uh, related kernel options. For example, kernel debugging, key memory leak, uh, uh, slab, slab debugging. Usually, they are uh, by default they are enabled. For example, in a lot of system, in, for example, uh, uh, other uh, kernel options for uh, in is related with the debugger, KASN or UBSN uh, kernel address sanitizer, and undefined behavior sanitizer. Uh, by the way, these uh, two sanitizers are very um, useful, a uh, powerful tool. We fixed uh, uh, several kernel bugs with these two uh, kernel, uh, two kernel two uh, kernel option. But uh, they slow down the, the kernel, kernel running. So uh, before you run cyclic test or other, other real-time uh, thread, please disable these uh, uh, debug related uh, kernel options. Uh, uh, for the, the kernel command line changes, uh, the no source lo lockup and NMA underscore work dog equals zero. It means to disable uh, extra uh, lock detection related timer. With the less timer, we will get a better performance. Uh, this is a, a trade off as well. We get a better performance, but we, lo uh, we lost uh, a lot of debug related features. So before we uh, do the re uh, real, -time, uh, real time thread tuning, uh, first I make sure our system is uh, stable enough. So we could disable debug related kernel option. Uh, this is our testing. The hardware is a, a NUC. It's a, a it's a CPU is a, a laptop a laptop CPU, and the software is a Ubuntu twenty two zero four. Uh, kernel is a, uh, upstream six dot six dot twenty RT twenty five. Uh, sec test two is a cyclic test. We set up two tests. One is before tuning. It's a Ubuntu twenty four twenty two zero four. Uh, kernel is a uh, 6.6.20 RT25. Uh, only change is a prime RT uh, kernel option is enabled. Uh, the, com uh, the, the second is common, uh, command is uh, uh, here, uh, C1P1999 M dash S. It is run for one, one, on one hour. Uh, after tuning is uh, the based on the first uh, uh, Based on the first uh, uh, test case, it's uh, uh, it's uh, enabled all the uh, tuning and optimization which I mentioned in this slide. Uh, during the cyclic running, we have uh, uh, run below uh, workload in background. The first case is uh, idle, no background, uh, no background workload. Just run the cyclic test. Second case is run stress ng. 
uh, it allowed for it is thread for for CPU for for, for cache uh, thread and is run the background the cyclic test is run the uh, foreground in run in foreground the third case is run uh, IO stress in background this test is just a DD a, a big file to the local file system in an infinite loop. The last one is a 3D testing around a GLMR2 uh, in background, around cyclic test in foreground. Uh, these four test cases are run for both before tuning and uh, after tuning. That is, the cyclic test run for eight times. Uh, this is the, 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 the test result. Uh, the before tuning, the color is in, uh, in lighter, lighter blue. After tuning, uh, the the, uh, the the color is in orange. Uh, the, from the result, after tuning, its uh, performance is much much better. Uh, this is a reference for the first reference is uh, or uh, uh, Intel uh, Intel Core processor real time tuning guide. Uh, for uh, this tuning guide, is uh, CPU is uh, for uh, network, uh, network and uh, edge. Uh, Intel has a, a and has not only a CPU for uh, step, uh, uh, laptop and uh, server, it, but also has a CPU for uh, for uh, industrial, uh, medical, and uh, telecommunications domains. Uh, the CPU are, are different. For for this for this tuning guide is for the uh, uh, network and the edge CPU. It has specific features such as uh, catch location and uh, TSN or TGPL related uh, features. Is it different with the, the, the or the, or desktop or laptop CPU? Uh, if you uh, use the CPU for I mean, for industrial, for me, uh, medical, for 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 communication, uh, <laughs> please ping or uh, marketing. Uh, they will have uh, much more detailed information for that. The second uh, is uh, uh, is just a, a a blog for tuning real time kernel. It's pretty good. Uh, that's all. Uh, any question? Thanks. So uh, one thing we always see in these real-time talk, uh, talks is the ISO CPU parameter. But if you look at the kernel documentation, you will see that this is deprecated. And if you look at it at practice, um, if you combine that with the C group version 2 CPU set manager, it's fundamentally broken. And I'm really wondering uh, if there is a good replacement for that or why we always see that in the, in the tuning talks. There, there are some things in the kernel that are more of a message than a rule. For example, the RT is already merged. We have the option in the kernel, right? That's that's a message. It's a message that the parameter RT will be merged, right? The message on the deprecation of the ISO CPU is a message saying, we need to get something better than this. We need, we still need. Yeah. Somehow it's not yet uh, that confidence. People still get, people we are empirically getting back to ISO CPUs because they found a point here, a point there, a point here, a point there. Um, my question is why man did some work um, on this C group thingy. And my understanding is that this replaces ISO CPU completely and you can reconfigure it at runtime based on your needs. We use those things on OpenShift and we get those numbers, right? But it doesn't work for everybody yet. So people fall back to ISO CPUs. On OpenShift, we run these 10 microseconds uh, uh, latency tests for NFV people. We have all this, this setup. That's why Tunity works. It's, it's because of those things. <clears throat> and on OpenShift, we don't use ISO CPUs because now we have a one use case here. Now it goes away and there's another workload that doesn't depend on it. And so the setup is always changing. And we do this online and don't do, so the results are good, but sometimes it doesn't work for someone and they fall back to ISO CPUs because it works. 
my point is Azure CPU um, removes the scheduling, the, the CPUs from the scheduling. And this is mostly what it does, except for the like timer goes away and all those kind of things. Yeah, I mentioned this one. Um, however, what Wyman did, what I mentioned before, is that you can use C groups and you can use an isolated C group and do what Azure CPU provides with C group features. And you can dynamically configure and remove the CPUs from the Exactly. So this is mostly the same. This is the scheduling part. So it removes, it's, I think it's the, it's root, turning it root. So yeah, it turns it, it root uh, as the root of the root domain. So each the C group is its root domain. So our root domain is outside of the other root domain. So the other root domain doesn't migrate its task there. That's why the task doesn't migrate. But that's not all because there is all those setups on managed IRQ, dependence on the RCU that are still binded to the CPU mask provided by the ISO CPUs. And many of these parameters, they are only acceptable after you reboot the system. And because it's not persistent by reboot, they still need to use it in the command line. We discussed this at the Plumber's Lex last year. Frederick was working on something like this. And there are still parts of these full ISO CPUs that depends on the on things that we still require reboot. There is working on it. We even discussed things like, oh, okay, if you want to turn the CPU not isolated and isolated, one workaround would be instead of rebooting, you turn the CPU on and off. But it does, this doesn't work because if you have like one CPU, if you run timer lot on a CPU and you turn off the other CPU, the machinery, the machinery for hot plug creates latency on the other CPU. So there is still work to be done to make it correctly. And that's why people fall back to, to ISOL CPUs because it depends on things on them. Um, so I don't want to hijack the session, but one problem here is really that when you run any container manager on your system that uses cgroup version 2, it will activate the cgroup controller, uh, the CPU set controller, and by that it will reset some of the uh, default affinities, and by that including uh, the effect of the ISOL CPU, so there it's definitely broken. No, it's not, because um, the affinity is set to all CPUs, but the load balance is still removed. So unless you change the mask to exclusive to the isolated CPUs, the scheduler never moves you over there. So this is just a trick question, but it, that doesn't affect you. Creating a root domain is part of the isolation CPUs. It's not all. When you create, on the, all the idea of isolating with C groups is creating a new root domain out of the other root domains that have the, the load balancing. That's part of the problem. It's not the entire problem. If you do the ISO CPU thingy, yeah. and then the scheduler load balance gets removed from the domain the by the command line. Domain. Yes, but it's removed, right? Now, if you, if you do C group V2, then by default, you see you, every task has this um, task affinity set to the non isolated CPUs, right? But with C group V2, uh, the scheduling enabled, the mask gets reset once the controller is enabled. That's why he says it's broken that way. However, the CPU mask is set to all CPUs, but the load balancing is removed, which means the scheduler never pushes you okay, yeah. there. Yeah. Therefore, it's, it's not really broken then. It just looks odd. Yeah, exactly. It looks odd because you look at the affinity and it seems that it will run there, but it will not run there because it's a different root domain. There's work to be done. <laughs> but yes, but but that, that's it. it. For now, the deprecation is more a message than a... It, it, if you see at, at the plumbers last year, the scheduling microconference, there's a talk from Frederick Weisbecker and where there is this discussion on problems that we still depend on the isospheres. Okay. Sorry for raging. Uh, uh, thank you. Well, well uh, uh, the, the last uh, last uh, problem uh, for the isolation. I just uh, if we disable isolation, we uh, I mean we don't uh, put any re uh, isolation related command line parameters. The problem is still good, but the uh, light less uh, than the, the isolated CPUs. 
uh, in our testing. <laughs> if you isolated CPUs, you don't even need RT because the CPU is isolated. There is no task running there. There is nothing to be preempted. We don't need RT. <laughs> we could have lots in the kernel. We could have if, if the CPU isolation is done properly. No. No, if, oh, for the NFV case, that where it's all user space. The memory allocator, for instance. The memory allocator. But it won't, won't it will it affect the current CPU or just the other CPUs? Well, you have your test CPU slot allocator, and then if you do this off, you go to the bug allocator. And this is like a Numa node by, uh, base. And if you have like a housekeeping CPU to run this part of the code there, you probably don't need RT. No, yeah, yeah, in most of the cases, when you have a CPU, you don't. You might get out of it, but this yeah. will depend on your shared resources. Yeah. But it's something for many people. Think many people are running the ISO CPUs with RT. They don't need RT. But that's long discussion. Oh, okay. And, and that's the wrong audience, because I'm, the, I'm, I'm talking on behalf of RT, and then people punch me because I'm going against <laughs> RT here. It's not always necessary, but Please. long discussion. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yeah, we need to keep friendship. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if so, uh, that's all. Thank you. Uh, thank you all of you again.